Hey, this is Joe, and today let's talk about integrating a constant, or just a number. There are two different forms that we could see when we're integrating a constant. The indefinite integral where there are no bounds, or the definite integral where we have bounds on our integral. So let's take the integral of 5 dx. Here, our constant is just 5, and we're going to take the integral with respect to x. I'm going to do something a little tricky here, where I'm going to insert 5 times 1 dx here on the right side. Now I can do this because 5 times 1 is 5, and so this is completely valid. The reason I want to do this is I'm now going to replace this 1 with something else. Recall, if you ever have a variable raised to the 0 power, that's equal to 1. So what I can now do on this right side is I can replace 1 with x raised to the 0 power. And the reason I pick x is just to match the x here. Now I have x raised to a power, so I can use the integration power rule. And if you need a refresher on the power rule, you can check out this video here. And in this case, we're going to take x to the 0 power, and we're going to add 1 to the power, which is going to give us x to the 1, and we're going to divide by that new power. So we're going to divide by 1. And since we have no bounds, we're also going to add c, our constant of integration. And since x to the 1 over 1 is x, we can just get 5 times x plus c, which will be equal 5x plus c. And so we can kind of get a formula here where if I'm taking the integral of some constant with respect to some variable, the final result's going to be the constant times the variable plus c. Now, let's work with a bounded constant integral. Let's take the integral of 5 dx from 1 to 6. Well, we already know that the integral of just 5 is going to end up giving us 5x, but instead of putting a plus c here whenever we're bounded, we're going to evaluate 5x from 1 to 6. When we evaluate, we substitute our top bound first. So we substitute 6 into x, and we get 5 times 6. And then we subtract 5 times 1 by substituting the 1 in. Notice we can factor the 5 out of this, and we get 5 times 6 minus 1, which is then equal to 5 times 5, which then equals 25. And the reason I factored the 5 out is this form that we get on this third line can be used anytime we're integrating a constant that is bounded. And so anytime we're integrating a constant, if it's not bounded, the result's going to be the constant times the variable you're integrating with respect to, plus c. And then if you have a bounded integral of a constant, the final result you can jump to is the constant times the top bound minus the bottom bound. So let's do some more problems using these new formulas we have. Say we wanted to take the integral of 7 dx. 7 is a constant. I'm integrating with respect to x. So my result's going to be 7 times x plus c. Let's do another one. Say I wanted to take the integral from 3 to 10 of pi dx. Pi is our constant. We're integrating with respect to x. And our bounds are 3 to 10. So I can use the definite integral over here to jump to our final answer, which will be pi times 10 minus 3, which is then just pi times 7, or we can rewrite that as 7 pi. Now, let's take the integral of 125 dy. This is an indefinite integral, and so we're going to use this formula up here. And instead of dx, we have dy, so really all that changes is the variable that we're going to multiply with on the right side. So our constant's 125, so we get 125 times our variable y this time, plus c. So hopefully you now feel comfortable taking integrals of constants. I'm Joe, and thanks for spending some time with me.